PW Hustle Networks present PWR at the Movies. Join the professor, Tommy Wonder, and JB as they discuss the greatest pro wrestling moments in movie history. In the future, after the big war, there will come a time to rebuild and a need for a new and special kind of soldier. This man is carrying a loaded weapon. Prepare to meet the next great American hero. That's where you come in. Are you serious? His name is... Hell. Sam Hell. Never heard of you. We're going to Frogtown. And this is the adventure he's been waiting for. We're gonna get him out, and then you're gonna get him pregnant. And if anyone's got a chance in hell of rescuing the virgins from the evil clutches of Toadie... It's a miracle. Right. Let's go. And escaping from Frogtown... Go, 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 go! It's Sam. Shit. Holy shit! Be there for the action. <laughs> the adventure. Oh, Sam! What are you doing? And be there for the dance of the three snakes. Dance or die! We're all gonna die. When hell comes to Frogtown. Starring Rowdy Ruddy Piper as Sam. Turn off! You are one weird dude. Sandal Bergman as Nurse Spangle. Wired to blow. Hell comes to Frogtown. Eat left, froggies! What is going on there to the Vito Whites, the Hami Nights, the PWC I didn't say probationary, Jimmy. So, you know what? I'm just going to give you that reprieve. I'm just, see, I'm very, very, you know, forgiving. I'm very, very, you know, you know, I let the things go. I go with the flow. And But if the flow goes the other way, go, go back to probation and then back to what... What I keep telling TW not to do. So neither here nor there. But again, it's all love, Jimmy. It's all love. But anyway, what's going on to the PWCI? What's going on to all the reflectionites? The left, the right, the Dems, the Repens. What is going on to one of the most famous reflectionites out there, President Donald Trump, who who has won victoriously. He has won the Supreme Court battle. You know what? It's, it's like Roe v. Wade. Things can get overturned. So you know what? I guess another 50 years before, you know, Donald Trump's a verdict of going his way will be uh, overturned. He'll be dead by then, but then you just need liberal judges in 50 years, and then we'll all be dead too. So neither here nor there. It just goes to show you, amend the Constitution. Don't depend on the Supreme Court. But that's my little p political diatribe there. But before I say welcome to the PWR podcast at the Hami Media Group at Podbeam.com, even though I just said it, we must acknowledge certain things that has happened since our last uh Edition since our last broadcast, you know, when we record sometimes, reflect that you know, sometimes we record a couple of days earlier. So, you know, sometimes people might be like, Professor TW, what's going on? You're not you're not current, you're not going, you're not telling us what's going on in the happenings of the world. Again, I keep telling y'all, I'm transparent. We record earlier in the week. So when we miss out on certain things, we acknowledge it on the next broadcast. And you know, I am not the official gatekeeper of death like TW is, but things happen in threes. 
So during this, during from the last broadcast to this broadcast, we lost three major people in our lives. Two in wrestling and one in entertainment. I'll go with the one in entertainment first because you know I love my I love me some curb your enthusiasm. And rest in peace to comedian extraordinaire Richard Lewis, who had who's battling, I think, either Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. So he had, you know, had a long battle. Of course, I, I hate that, you know. I know family members of mine that are going through the little nuances of that. And you know, you never want to see you know, your loved ones in that state of mind. So for, for Richard Lewis and his family, I say rest in peace. And, you know, hopefully they will celebrate Richard Lewis's life because you got, he's got like seasons of Curb Your Enthusiasm where you can, you know, see him on TV being funny, you know, going back and forth with Larry David. And it was funny because the latest, the last episode I saw of Curb Your Enthusiasm, he was doing his comedy shtick at an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. How funny is that? He's like, I'm getting over with alcoholics. It is, it, again, the nuances are so funny with that. So rest in peace, Richard Lewis. And of course, on the wrestling side, we lost The Rock, Ole Anderson. Yes, there is another Rock. It's not only Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It is not only Don The Rock Morocco, but the, well, I can't call him the first Rock. He might be the first Rock, but The Rock, Ole Anderson, one of the original pillars of the Four Horsemen died at the age of 81. Again, a natural life. So, you know, rest in peace to him and his family. And, of course, the one that kind of, I don't know if it, you could say it stunned the wrestling world, but I think it was stunning because of what we learned later. Rest in peace to Virgil, a.k.a. What was his other name? Uh, Soul T. Train w. Jones. Soul Train Jones. And what's the stunning? The stunning thing was not that he was battling ailments. That's not the stunning part, T.W. The stunning part was he was older than we originally thought. He lied about when he was born. He originally told people he was born in 1962. No, he was born 10 years earlier. So, T.W., if, if he you was not... Yeah. So, you oh, know, we, 62. We, you know, in SummerSlam 91, where he won the million dollar t championship at SummerSlam, mm -hmm. yep. he was actually 40 years old at that time. Wow. So, you know, again, that's just a little nuances. Again, it's not stunning that he had the ailments, TW, but it was stunning that, you know, we learned from his people, his management team, that he would that he kind of lied on his birth certificate. So, you know, neither here nor there. I'm not, it's not about, I'm judging him, but I think he even knew that he had to lie about his age to make it in the wrestling business. So this way he wouldn't be like thrown out the pasture. So Virgil rest in heaven, you know, you hustled the wrestling world and that made you the master. People made means about you with uh, having that, uh, you know, that booth where no one would, would uh, get your autographs or pay for your autographs. You know, there's a booth up in heaven and they're lining up around the block to finally sign, the, get those autographs from Virgil. So Ole Anderson, Richard Lewis and Virgil rest in heaven. So before I even, well, I'm going to introduce T.W., but T.W. There's a fourth you know, one. You can't, you can't leave a, out the fourth one. There's a fourth one. I missed the fourth one. See, you yeah, are. The and I thought you were actually going to go with these three because the fourth one's a wrestler. So I thought you were going to go with him over Richard Lewis. Who, by the way, I must say, as a kid, Richard Lewis, I've known way before Kirby Enthusiasm, but I absolutely love him on Kirby Enthusiasm. He's the he's the heel basically. He's the heater on uh, Kirby Enthusiasm, the wet blanket. But mm -hmm. uh, he he would always date. He dated the chick that uh, interviewed the Step Brothers for the job, and they go no. We're going to interview you. That's her. She was on an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, right. She's like, Lee, get out of my office. Anyway, because of him, when I was a kid, I don't know if you remember Boku. It was like a Snapple, but in a box. And he oh. goes, what do you mean you got no Boku? He goes, when I go to a party, I'm bringing my own Boku. And because of those commercials, when I got old enough to buy my own stuff, I would buy Bokus in a six-pack. They were like the kid, not Capri Suns, but like the high Cs, but they were adult, like juice boxes and i would I, buy I never heard of boku b-o-k-u and i would go to mm -hmm. parties and stuff and bring bokus with me and people would ask me what's that i go hey man when i go to a party i bring my own boku and people didn't know what it was i wish i could get one now i'm gonna see if i can find one and mix it with some vodka which is probably what, what richard lewis was doing but the fourth guy is paul the butcher mm -hmm. michonne 
he passed away at 86. I don't I don't really know how. Um, Mad Dog no. Michonne was the one with the fake leg, right? That Triple H ripped off or somebody ripped off. Well, somebody Paul the Butcher Michonne was his partner or cousin or brother or whatever, but he mm-hmm. also passed away. And, and when my buddies who announced it to us um, said, there's number three, I'm like, damn you, Richard Lewis is number three. They're like, we don't even know who Richard Lewis is. I'm like, the hell you don't. And I said the Boku line, and they didn't remember the Boku. But he was a pretty big '80s comedian, and and the oh. '90s, and then Curve gave him the comeback. And J- Larry David's post about it was pretty cool because Larry David basically takes nothing serious, and he said they were born five days apart in the same hospital, and they basically been in each other's lives one way or the other for the last 40, 50 years. And he said and today he made me cry, and I'm never gonna forgive him for that. Like he basically right. said he just sat there sobbing. But I'm, you you can't imagine those two aren't buddy. You know what I mean? Like that mm-hmm. that whole show. That show is so good. Like if you like Seinfeld, you'll love Curb Your Enthusiasm because it's Seinfeld without a script. Absolutely. It's all ad libs, and there's a whole season where they reunite the Seinfeld cast. Mm-hmm. Um, friends are on there for us. Not the whole season, but David Schwimmer's on there quite a bit. Uh, right. Just a great show. And you know what? It's the same thing I felt for Richard Lewis and and. I feel for Virgil, and now that I know he's older even, it's like, you know, 86 is a good run for Paul, Bashan, um, and uh, Ole. 70, you know, 76 is Ole, a good run for Le- Richard Lewis, Virgil, too. Ole, Virgil, and Richard Lewis were all ill, and I, I'm mm-hmm. going to assume Paul Bashan was, too, but it's like at some point, you know, if you believe there's something better coming, you're ready for them to meet it because who wants to watch their family or friends suffer? 62, mm-hmm. I thought was too quick. That's that's less than 12 years away for me. Um, so that made me sad. But to hear he's 72, that that makes me feel like he got 10 more years than I thought he did. And not mm-hmm. that I'm ready to go in my 70s. I'm I'm kicking around till I'm 90 wonder. But uh, but yeah, it's it's just every time I seen Virgil, it kind of depressed me because like I literally at one point thought he was homeless. So when I read that he was died at the family home surrounded by family that made me feel like he wasn't and like maybe he was maybe it was a gimmick maybe he was working it um to make it to get people to give him money or whatever but um i don't know i, 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 I think he just i think virgil just hustled the wrestling world right. so you right. know you well, got for him. To him. He, mm-hmm. he's old enough now like, 72 he was old enough to be a carney so yeah. you know they were carnies and and, and uh, you know, I, I got to say this about Ole. I always talk about him being the old man who didn't fit the four horsemen. I still think he was probably a good human being. I just don't think he ever fit <laughs> the horsemen. Yeah tell, that to, yeah, tell that to Teddy Law. He was doing, he was dancing. So I don't, I'm, I'm right. just saying, well, you know, yeah, that's everybody true. has I mean, their experiences. I, I mean, as a human, you don't want someone to suffer regardless, right? And what do they Absolutely. tell you all the time? I'm, I, but again, there's two sides to every person right. and two sides to every opinion. So t- Teddy yeah, Long I, would, I would be one person to be like, Teddy Long would yeah. agree that it's, it's up to God to judge. So if, if, if Ole did go. things that he shouldn't have done, He's he's answering to him now. So, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you don't celebrate someone dying. You don't celebrate, you know, like you know, especially with politics, man. People celebrated. Um, who's the guy? The, the the guy, the shooting guy, and he got shot and killed at the gun range. Like people were celebrating him dying because he was pro guns. Like, come on, yeah. man. Like how how low can you get? And so I just wanted to make sure that people know that I. When I talk smack about Ole, it's Ole as a wrestler, not Ole as a person. I don't know him. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Teddy Long does, and if they didn't have a good time together, that's that's them. Um, but I, I just don't wish death upon anybody. And even though we're all getting it, we're all going to yeah. die, I just hope everyone knows my criticism are of him wrestling in underwear and, and boots that look like socks and no knee pads. That's it. And he didn't yeah. fit the whole horseman gimmick. Maybe him mm-hmm. and who was the other? Anderson? Gene? Gene Anderson. The Gene and Ole were probably badass in their day. They were probably the demolition of the Road Warriors of their day before I was ever even thought about wrestling. wrestling. But him and Arn weren't oh, him and Tully. Arn and Tully. That that to me is a better. That's why I like Luger as the Horseman better than Ole as the Horseman. Even though some of them old stodgy people prefer the original four, I ain't one of them. But Ole mm-hmm. recipes, Virgil recipes, mm-hmm. Mad Dog Bashar recipes, Richard Lewis rest in peace. And you don't have to introduce me. People know who I am by now. It's good. But I did. This is for Ray. And what is that? I can't see. It's a pop'em. Oh, a cane pop'em. Nice. I have this one, and I have the Warrior, and I think the Undertaker's coming soon. But they come Ooh. with their little plaque for the trophy or whatever. That nope. thing was on uh, on Fanatics U. Jeff mm-hmm. from TNA sent it to me. I bought it. It was 16 bucks. 
and then shipping. So I paid 20 bucks for it, I think. And mm -hmm. I went to go back. It was already sold out. There's only 3,000 of them. So I have one of them. Damn. Well, you yeah. know, you're, you're quick on the button. So, you know, that's good for you. Cool. I also to bought you. the Sting that was released yesterday. That's only oh, 3,000 3, or 5,000. Huh? And and before anything, before we get into our, you know, PWR, you just said the name Sting, Steve Borden. So congratulations to a career, Steve Borden, 39 years in the wrestling business. I saw him wrestle in 1987. I saw, you know, him go 45 minutes with Ric Flair, you know, Clash of Champions 1, 1988. We saw, you know, TW, that, you know, there's so many. Sting against Muda, Sting against Flair, Sting against Luger, you know, yada, 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 Crow Sting, Joker Sting. There's so much of Sting. People might say, you know, Vince McMahon kind of fucked up his career in WWE. But again, no matter what, he he had his time everywhere and he went out on his own terms. So congratulations to Steve Borden, a.k.a. Sting. So TW, give a little three minutes to Loki and then we get on our show for Sting for your nice guy. touch, nice touch of his sons coming out as the red and black sting and the surface sting. Uh, my favorite sting, the red, white, and blue. Uh, mm -hmm. the one he won on my birthday, mm -hmm. right there. See him right here, yeah. I see it, can't really see it because of the other stuff. But mm -hmm. sting, it's funny. Um, Amanda Caliber, I'm, I don't think she listens to our podcast, but back when I was a little more active on the Twitter and I was just adding wrestling people, she and I added each other. Um, She's a huge Sting fan. She painted her face all all four ways that he painted his face. Half half Crow Sting, half Surfer Sting, half Wolfpack Sting, half Joker Sting. And she took a picture of both, put it on there and talked about how she met him. Just such a good story. She's a good she's a good person, you know. And I always she said something about once she saw him the first time, she wanted to watch as much. She saw him for the first time in eighty not eighty seven. 91 or something like that so whenever she saw him for the first time she saw him and from that point on she wanted to watch it but the age-old question is who's the one wrestler you could watch a video of just all them like you had to pick one like you know if you're on a stranded island who you take it my answer has always been sting um yes the same can be said about him is is about flair and about brett and about whoever he has the same match you know he does the singer splash the scorpion deadlock the death drop the howling, the dive over the top rope. But the, the one thing about Sting that I think makes it different is Flair brought humor. Uh, mm -hmm. Brett brought seriousness. Sting brought excitement. Like, no matter who he wrestled, no matter if he did the same things in that match that he did with everybody else, you could not help. He had it. Sting has it. And, you know, even, even in the end with AEW, when he did the dive off the balcony, I think on the Hobbs, and he did the dive through the table and missed it. And everyone's like, he's dead. You know, that was a couple months back. He gave his all every single match. There's never a match in my life. I've ever seen sting in where he phoned it in. And mm -hmm. the worst one, obviously being Seth cause he got hurt and he tried, but even there he did, broke a bone in his neck near his spine, which is the one I broke, which could have paralyzed him and or killed him. Obviously it, it wouldn't be and or it would be paralyzed or killed him um mm -hmm. he gave his all and he's he's one of the first you know you love mike awesome mike awesome was a guy who started wrestling the luchador style as a guy the size of sid vicious sting was one of the first guys that size that would just run and clear the top rope and dive over undertaker does it too but he didn't do it till later Sting did that stuff way early on. Um, top rope to the floor. He just, he has it, man. Like, he oozes. Hogan had charisma, but he punched and kicked. Sting had charisma and flew all over the ring like a pinball machine. And and just, mm -hmm. it was exciting. You couldn't watch a Sting match and not be excited. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, again, we just try to keep up with the Joneses here. We, you know, so we as transparent. We know what's going on and all that. What stuff, did I so. text you and Ray? What did I text you on the day of the show before it happened? What did I predict? Oh, that Sting was going to win. Win and retire undefeated so Tony yeah. can have another tournament. And he did. Mm -hmm. and it was the right thing to do. I feel like it was partially done as a slap in the face to Undertaker's streak ending. Um, right. 24-0. But. No one can take that away from him. Now someone can chase the record and be 26 and 0 or whatever the case may be and retire. But it's a it's a breakable and, record. 
and he retired as a champion. So they right, were old right. school with yeah. the Vern Gagne, Fritz Von Erich uh, tradition. So with that being said, welcome to the PWR podcast. And now welcome to TW's favorite part of the PWR uh, mantra of shows, PWR at the movies. So, you know, with that being said, Reflectionites, you know, Christopher Paul Bruce Winman, who's the newest Reflectionite TW, you know, I remember a couple of months ago, he put this on the Facebook fan page, the PWR podcast Facebook fan page. And if you're not a part of it, go and join the nostalgic train, but neither here nor there. But, but TW, Christopher said, Chabello, he said, TW, why don't you do this movie? as one of your future episodes. And I said, I looked at it. I was despondent. I was like, what the hell? I saw the picture. First of all, I got to talk about the picture. We are doing a 1988, I guess I'm going to have to go air quotes for the audio reflection. Nice TW classic from 1988 starring Roddy Roddy Piper. And the movie is called hell comes to Frogtown." TW. Before anything, you remember how we slide into each other's DMs, no homo there, but you saw the pic <laughs> you saw the picture. You saw the movie picture that they have for Hell Comes to Frog Town. Roddy Piper is, is stoic. He has the girl on his knees, and there's a frog in the background. I'm like, what in the Tromaville hell is this all about here? <laughs> because I'm like, okay, I can I can I love these kind of like dinky kind of movies like the toxic avenger is is so bad but i enjoy it so i said okay is this Trumbleville or something because then i can enjoy it but tw when i see that roddy piper i don't know if he auditioned for this i hope he was offered the lead role for it, this there's play. no way he auditioned for this no let, let me just say my statements but you know if roddy piper had to audition for hell right. comes to frog town reflection nights then everything that you hear from, not conspiracy theorists, but people who just want to see Hollywood go down in flames. Did, 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 did Roddy Piper TW have to audition with Harvey Weinstein? Did he have to do something sexual? <laughs> Is to this get Miramax? I have no idea. Wait, was it Miramax? No, this was New World Pictures. But neither here nor there. I'm just saying, if... If Roddy Piper had to audition in front of Harvey Weinstein, and you know how Harvey Weinstein is a pedophile freak. You know, he does things, you know, he's a bisexual freakazoid. I'm just saying, TW, all the all the things you've heard about Hollywood, the evil side of it, the the drinking of the children's blood and all the seances and shit like that, burn it to the ground. What say you, TW, about that? I mean, you even you was even quick to say he he better not have auditioned for this. What say you? Listen to me, man. Uh, the first thing I got to say, I, I just looking up to see what came out first, it or they live. And they came out the same year. And I'm hoping this movie came out second. But I thought I you think told this me, did. I think this did. I thought you said they live came out late 88. I don't. You, you know what it is? This IMDb changed the way their shit is. Yeah. So it's hard to, you know, give confirmation here. But I think in terms of what came out first. No, actually, the release date did come out January 88. So maybe They Live came out second. So that's why he was, you know, he rebounded, if you will, Reflection Nights, with a better cult classic in They Live and this monstrosity called Hell Comes to Frogtown. So you are correct, TW. So this came out in January 88. Maybe, uh, maybe the production release date, you know. But again, Roddy Piper. Okay, I found it. I'm, I found a thing. So we'll, we'll see here. What about it? Right, go ahead and say what you're saying. But but either way, Roddy Piper was going had the Hollywood bug. Again, we saw it with with Jesse the Body Ventura and and what he was going to do with Predator and all that stuff. So Roddy Piper was like, you know what? If Jesse can do it, I can do it. Reflection Nights. So you know the the funny thing is with Hell Comes to Frog Town, and you look at it from this standpoint, and we'll talk about what happens in this movie, Reflection Nights. But it's a post apocalyptic kind of i want to say comedy adventure because the frogs look really like cheesy it's cheap i'm Great just night. i w i wish these frogs were cgi so this way i can enjoy this movie but it's not it's just rubber faces but neither here nor there but again 
Piper got the itch to go to Hollywood TW, and this was the first movie that came out. Thank God for they live because if that didn't become a cult classic like it has been to this day, I think Bro- P- Roddy Piper would have been direct to movie, direct to video kind of a movie star. We and certainly he is <laughs> technically because in the nineties he had a couple of movies that I never even heard of. Didn't we I've do a movie his- called Tag Team? No, that was on ABC. That was a that was a network TV show pilot. Yeah, we did tag. Oh, team. yeah, yeah, that's what I but thought. But that was but that wasn't a movie. But that was his like last string of something like very big and very noticeable. But everything else he's done after they live is very direct to video. So you know, again, with that being said, we are gonna talk about Hell Comes to Frog Town from 1988. The budget was 1.5 million dollars. Tw. But it looked like somebody shot it with a with a home video <laughs> movie camera because you know, oh god, TW I, I, again. I'm trying to give you a picture of this because again, people, even executive producer extraordinaire Big Ray Hernandez said to me in the DMs, Reflection Nights, "What the fuck is this movie?" He never heard of it. And again, I, and I told right. Ray and I told TW, CM Punk on an AEW Dynamite actually referenced. Roddy Piper and this movie. So it kind of like hit the, the light bulb in my head like, okay, well, Roddy Piper has a movie. I did not know when it came out, but I knew I've heard the name Hell Comes to Frog Town. So, of course, it is our duty to watch these movies for you Reflectionites. And it is our duty to tell you, should you watch this movie? Well, I gave TW the link and it was YouTube. So if you don't want to rent it on Amazon Prime, if you don't want to rent it on Netflix or, or have a subscription and you want to watch it free, watch it on YouTube and you won't feel cheated. I did not feel cheated watching a free link and TW certainly did not feel cheated that he had to rent it or anything else. He watched it for free. So if you can find a free link, then watch it there. So with that being said, TW, anything else you want to say about with the comparisons or, or you got any notes that you wanted to talk about? First of all, this it's like you said, the, the cinematography is terrible. The acting's terrible. Piper's basically Piper. He's wrestling's Piper. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 the dialogue is terrible. Um, the costumes are terrible to answer the question. No, no one should watch this for free or otherwise. It, it is easily. And this is after the other Piper movie. This is easily the worst movie we've done. There's no, and it's an attempt. First, I thought it, I thought it was going to be a couple years. Wait, this is this is worse. This is worse than the zombie the movie zombie that we versus wrestlers. Yeah, okay. It's worse. I'm just saying because that's Damn. terrible. And you had no expectations for it, but mm-hmm. the fact hell comes to Frog Town. I think I was confusing it with Legends of Flatbush or whatever that Stallone movie is. It's about wrestling, mm-hmm. whatever. That was Lords of Frog though. Town or something like that. Yeah, Lords of Flatbush. Lords of Flatbush. Yeah, I, but I, was, I was thinking it was that. So then when I seen this, I'm like, what the fuck? It's basically a cross between Red Dawn Mm -hmm. and uh, Star Wars. These people are like sand Tusken Raiders. Uh, Then you got the guy, the the bad guy, who's the the cop that's trying to rape Piper or whatever the hell he's doing in the beginning Mm -hmm. of it. He's the guy that fought uh, Clint Eastwood in Any Which Way You Can, which was the sequel to Any Which Way But Loose or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And... The one where they fought each other and Clint Eastwood beat the mustache off of his face. That's the guy. I haven't seen that guy in anything other than that. I think he also maybe fought Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse, but that might have been a different guy. But this movie is absolutely garbage. But what I thought it was, was a couple years older than They Live. And I thought Mm -hmm. it was them trying to redo They Live. Like, all right, Piper's a They Live guy, so he can do this. And so I liked it better when they had the masks on and you didn't know. So mm-hmm. when he finally comes into that strip club, or it wasn't a strip club. Oh, right. don't, 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 go, don't go too far into it. But, but when they're I'm all just, just out and about as yeah. frogs, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, Is yeah. this supposed to be Ninja Turtles too? Like the nuclear waste turned the frogs into humans? You know what's funny? Because you said, w- w- what you said is like, if this was the sequel, or this was the continuing story of They Live into the After Effects, I actually could take that more seriously. But right. again, he's not playing the character that he did in They Live. And of course, that came out second in comparison to Hell Comes to Frog Town. But we must at least give the plot here that Roddy Roddy Piper, ladies and gentlemen, Reflectionites Extraordinaire. This is where you're going to let people know why it's worse than I Wrestlers know. for Zombies. He is playing a character named Sam Hell. And, you know, when 
the, the name is cool. I don't have no problem with the name Sam Hell because it, it reminds me of like Escape from New York, Escape from LA with Kurt Russell and Snake. the way he was snake plisting. He was trying to be that badass dude. He's a nomadic scavenger. And you know what? Tom Solo. Well, he's Han Solo too, but yeah, actually he's more Han Solo because right. he's got a weapon, Reflection Knights, and no, it's not a gun. It's his dick. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a love gun. It's a love gun. And you know why it's a love and why he's uh, wanted by the government? Because he's not shooting blanks. He is carrying a weapon of mass destruction. And that is seduction. Terror. A weapon of mass seduction. Okay. Well, See, now you're giving him more credence. Now you're making These are terms I use. Love guns, kiss, and I would say I have a weapon of mass seduction. Give it to okay, all the bitches. Like weapons Leon. Weapons of, Leon weapons Kirk of, enthusiasm. I give it to all the bitches. Yeah, but when the baby is give it to you. Yeah, but when the baby's born, we all go to Murray Povich. So that neither here nor there. But uh, I got beef caked. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that that is that is the premise, firstly, of this movie. But the funny thing, TW, is that it is a post-apocalyptic thing. So the funny thing about this is the nuance of how it got to that point, that Roddy Piper is a nomadic scavenger with a love gun weapon of mass seduction. Reflectionites, the world went to shits because men across the world, you know, did nuclear bombs. So they all wanted to show how their bomb was bigger and better. So the world was blown up, and now it's run by the majority is run by women. So you know what, TW? The funny thing I thought about this is because of today's like social media, today's like you know podcast with you know men that are like so I don't want to say so pro men and so like anti women. You get where I'm going with this because there are men out there, and if you don't know these names, reflection nice, Google them like Kevin Samuels, like Fresh and Fit podcast. They will tell you how Andrew men Tate. should... And, oh, Andrew Tate's a good, good example, too. How men should be the leaders, the gatherers, the hunters, and all that, and the women should just stand to the background and do the things for the family unit and be the mother, be the nurturer, and all that stuff. That's the way the society should be. And the funny thing, TW, is when the world goes to shit, women don't know what to do. They got... They're gifted the world. They're gifted the provincial United States government. And look at the post-apocalyptic. It's not futuristic. It's not nothing because women can't pick up. Some women are butchy. Some women are like lesbian dykes and shit like that. You know, uh, again, Travis, I, you know, bless me. I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little bit more, but it, again, this is, the, this is a little bit of PG-13 professor right now. Maybe a little rated R, but I have to say what I have to say. TW will be rated G. Right now, but again, TW knows where I'm going with this. Women here in this apocalyptic world is running things, but they don't know what to do. You know, the world looks to shit. The you know, frogs are are, are running one side of the world, and the women are running the other side of the world. So, what say you, TW, about the nuance of the post-apocalyptic? I thought women were supposed to make everything better. They didn't make anything better. Well, this is '87 when people were smarter and they knew better. And okay. uh, they, they recorded accordingly. Um, <laughs> this is before AOC proved it. Okay. Um, and so it's not – so, listen, at the risk of us getting canceled, there's a right way and a wrong way to talk about things. And Andrew uh -huh. Tate and guys like that are too – they're too bullish, if you will. Uh -huh. um, but it's not a secret that statistically – the world was a better place when there was the core family where the man went to work, the woman raised the kids. People weren't paying. Like I have friends whose wives quit their jobs because they were paying as much in daycare for their kids, for her to go to work as she was making. Right. And sometimes mm -hmm. it was the guy. So the family unit, we were putting out better human beings when someone was the, when a parent, whether it be a guy or a girl, I don't even care at this point. If one of them can stay at home and raise the kids instead of a uh -huh. school doing it or a daycare center doing it or the grandma who really is just letting them run the fucking roost. As, as long as that two-parent household, doesn't matter if it's two guys right. or two girls right. or men right. and women exactly. traditionally. Exactly. As long as one of them's there teaching them how to be a good human being with discipline mm -hmm. and not necessarily hitting them. I never got hit. I think I turned out okay. My two brothers ended up prisoners, but... 
Mm-hmm. It, you can't say it's because they weren't hit because I wasn't hit and I ain't never been a prisoner. So, but that's what their point is, is the, the nuclear family, which you have one political party is trying to explode that and not make that, which that's the other thing. It's too extreme either way. You can't be, you can't have people saying it can only be the traditional family. And then you also can't have people saying, fuck the traditional family. Let's, let's have three mm-hmm. husbands. Let's have right. like. You, you know, got there's to a have faith. a balance. You have to there's, have a right, common right. balance. But in a perfect you can have world, the both. You had one working parent and one stay at home parent. Again, I fucking give me a wife that will let me stay home and raise some kids. And listen, I don't care how many women I offend. I'm going to do it and I'm not going to complain about it if I'm doing that over going to work. Because the two reasons for one, it's easy in the beginning other than the crying and the feeding and the diaper changing. But then they get a little bit of self-sufficient. And the proof is these women end up getting side jobs when their kids are in school anyway, either volunteering at school or going whatever. So mm-hmm. you're going to miss it when it's done. And you're going to end up having to get a fucking job anyway because we live in a society, unfortunately, where two people have to you have, to have a two-person income. Whereas 50 years ago, people, one person had a job. And there was half the workforce because half the workforce stayed home. You made more money. You like for the times, right? Mm-hmm. You could work as a teacher and raise a family. You could work. You ain't working at McDonald's and raising a family unless you're the manager. But the point is, I digress. Yeah. So what happens is, and this is what the saying has always been: women are too emotional. So when stuff like that happens, if you need an exhibit, I'll got three letters for you. A O C. Once she gets her feelings involved, she goes off the fucking rails. Is every woman like that? Absolutely not. But the, everyone's prototypical strong female politician is fucking what's her dick? Um, Clinton, Hillary Clinton. Look at her when she lost. She got emotional, right? Whereas other people are like, eh, fuck you. I'm coming back for years. Take your job, and and so on and so forth. So. To be fair, but to be fair, but I just want to say to be fair. I don't mm-hmm. want to go one political every right. There's, right. A, there's people on the other side too. You, you got to be in the middle. You got to yeah. be in the middle. That's all I'm just saying. Go ahead with your the diet. Guy in the movie mm-hmm. who's the cop, and I just remembered why he was dissecting Roddy Piper because he got his daughter pregnant. That's mm-hmm. that, and she claimed he raped her. And then when right. she found out she was pregnant, actually the dad didn't know. He just thought he raped her, and that's why he was in mm-hmm. jail. And then she recanted her story because she found out she was pregnant and wanted Isn't to have it, the wait, baby. wait, wait. But the, the beginning is funny reflection right? because. He is in a chair. It looks like he's going to do... It's the death penalty. Yeah. So the guy, the, the sheriff, whatever, is... He was like a custodian, arrested, dude. He, he arrested like, Rowdy Piper for having sex with his daughter. He raping. did not... He, raping. Well, he said rape. Oh, yeah, you're right. He, he. But again, the nuance of apocalyptic movie... Again, I have to go back to Escape from New York or Escape from L.A. Snake Plissken, you know, bombed places. Snake Plissken stole from the new I'm United States. It. Well, you should. It's actually enjoyable movies, but he is more of a terrorist doing things like that. For so Roddy Piper getting the Snake Plissken treatment over raping his daughter is very funny to me. But again, it shows you the nuances of the new United States run by women in these eccentric, extreme. No matter what on the aisle you are politically, but. He is given a pardon by the new United States women's government because he has, what is that word again, TW? A loaded weapon. (laughs) That's what she said. Yes. He has a loaded weapon, Reflectionites. The weapon, no, I wanted the the trademark that you said. Yes. The love gun. He's got a loaded love gun. Yes, the, the loaded love gun because Roddy Piper has something that most men in the new, new United States don't have, and that is sperm. So he is recruited by the new government that's run mostly by women to impregnate fertile women. Because, you know, it's funny. Again, I can't get this. I can't get the nuance of the science. <laughs> Reflectionize. Bear with me here because the nuance is this. Roddy Pipe. And, and let's say the percentage, TW, there's like in a world of whatever's left of, I guess, three million men. Right. Let's use that number. And I'm being that's too high of a number, even for the being population. liberal. Yes, I'm being liberal here. Let's say there's 3 million men around the world right now in that new apocalyptic world. The percentage of men carrying a loaded weapon, a weapon of mass seduction, TW, is down to, let's say, 5%. 5%. So Roddy Piper is f- representing 5% of the world that can impregnate women. But the, the, the weird part is every, 
you know, mostly the, the, the percentage of women being fertile is higher than the percentage of men having the love gun, TW. I don't get the math, TW. Make the math make sense to me. Well, I don't think there was a higher percentage. I think the whole point of this movie is the frog people rounded up all the fertile women, which, hey, how'd they know? And so they were all in one place, and the mission was to go break them out because they were fertile, and the two bitches with Piper were not. I'm, I'm just saying, TW, if there's not that many men that are right. that have the love gun, there shouldn't be that many women. And to be fair, there was there was a crop of fertile women. That's what I'm just saying. There's probably more percentage-wise of fertile women after the nuclear holocaust, TW. That's what I'm just saying. The nuclear right. holocaust happened, and men's sperm went down, but women's fertility went up. I don't get the math. Just make the math make sense, reflection. I, I'm just saying. I'm, the men I'm, died in the war. The women were still alive. It was it was even. I just why do some have it and some don't? If whatever happened affected everybody, how did he? How did he survive it? Yeah, I, I he was probably saying. sliding in your DMs, and you probably kept it on ice for him. I'm not fertile, so why would he slide in my DM? I got nothing to offer. The war. I'm just saying. There's nothing you, to offer. You kept him on ice. You let him stay home. You let him be a stay at home power top. You know, for me in the new new United States, TW, I would just have the cups. I just have I'm just make sure it's all in the cup and all in the fridge. That's all this is me. But anyway, he is giving a pardon, reflection ice. And and TW, I guess they were trying to be funny here too, because you know, when they gave him this mission to go impregnate these fertile virgins, he had to wear a chastity belt. And now this goes into they were making fun of Escape from New York, and you didn't see either one, but Escape from New York. You know, Snake Plissken, when he did his missions and he wasn't he didn't accept to do these missions. He was actually forced to do these missions, escape from New York and escape from L.A. They always implanted like viruses in him. And he had a certain amount of time to like do his mission before either he blows up or dies or some shit like that. So I'm just giving you the nuances since you didn't see it. So for Piper to like go and pregnant these fertile women reflectionites, they the provisional government. That's run by women had to protect the loaded gun. So what did they do? They created a chastity belt for Roddy, Roddy Piper. So what say ETW? Because and, and of course, there's a caveat with this chastity belt. If he let it, if he uh, unsealed the flap, it had a timer and his dick would blow up. That's what I'm just saying. I'm just giving the nuances, T.W. So what say you about and these? If he ran from them and he got too far away from their earrings, it would beep and then grab his dick and make him hurt. Yeah, he would He would have, the, he would have a venereal disease and he would be feeling the pains of venereal diseases. Reflection. So it's just funny nuances that, you know, at least with this, because Escape from L.A., the viruses were fake. It was just, you know, embedded in Snake Pliston's mind to do these missions or he would die. So, you know, they kind of... They they use that like misinformation, like you know, today's social media. So it's just funny to me that they did this. And actually, later in the movie, the chastity belt did explode. So it is what it is. But they, so did, that, they did make it look like it was bullshit and then it exploded, which is actually one of the funniest scenes of the movie. Yeah, so, so fucking bad. But the, we uh, have, here's the we thing. Have, wait, wait, before anything, I just have to recognize at least Roddy Piper's the star, but also his co-star. I think she was in Conan the Barbarian, if I'm not mistaken. But his co-star is Sandel Bergman, who plays, what the hell is her name? Sparkle? I forgot. Oh, Satchel? I forgot that. But anyway, the, the bitch's name is Sandel Bergman because she just looks vehemently from Conan the Barbarian, though. I just wanted to acknowledge her. But what were you going to say? Um, the, the, the funny thing about it is the trying to find that chick <clears throat> the two things the chick is one um mm -hmm. the other chick was hotter the short haired chick right mm -hmm. but i think the chastity belt's purpose was um the chastity yes, she belt did. yes she did play uh in conan the barbarian sandel juliet lafleur was squid lips sandel bergman but the other chick is Cess Varel who plays Centuria? Yeah, Cess Varel. She was she was hotter. Um, but so the chassis belt was a it was it was a punishment if he tried to run and B I think it was to stop him from whacking or banging other chicks because he needed to save it for those girls. But there's a scene 
where the blonde tries coming on to him and he turns her down, right? And then she, uh-huh. goes, I'm a master of seduction or whatever the fuck. And as soon as she goes to bed, the other one tries to bang him, and then who's, you're out who's of not fertile? Her. And she's not fertile, but she's right. horny. It was waste, waste of it. Uh-huh. Right, right. She said she wanted to see it, take it for a ride. Uh, but anyhow, the, the blonde the whole time is like the beta. She's the second to the black chick in the beginning. Then she's uh-huh. the second to the G.I. Jane chick who's there. And uh, which, by the way, that chick was on X Files. Hell comes to Frogtown. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's with the other girls. So, so, but the blonde comes out all timid. And then right when she's about to bang Piper, the chick does the thing with her earring and makes it thing. And she goes, I was just following orders. Like the other chick was the leader. And then all uh-huh. of a sudden, now she's alpha boss. And the other chick is, you're out of uniform, private, or whatever the hell the case was. But it's yeah. funny because Sandel never takes off her clothes, but the other chick does immediately, right? Yes. And you definitely look at her and think lesbian the whole time. Like, you're never, ever thinking she's going to mm-hmm. be interested in Piper. I'm thinking her and the blonde are going to go at it, right? Like, they're going to go in the tent to taunt them, right? So, this, and then at the this, end. You know, you're right. This Because this looked like a bad 80s porn. Yeah, the, the, like the way the the cinematography, no. the camera work. The, no, the even, best way to describe it is it looks like a Kevin Sullivan produced Dungeon of Doom video. That is right. <laughs> the Hogan getting choked out by the Big Show, um, staying in the White no, Castle. No, then this is better. Then this is better. Oh, it's this, better. White but Castle of Fear and then Dungeon of Doom is all, that's the that's the level. But it's very are. similarly similarly done. It was mm-hmm. it was bad, dude. It was not good. It, it was not good, but it, it it has this funny moments again. The the chastity belt that explodes is funny, you know. To protect the loaded weapon, if you will, reflectionites is a funny concept for it. But again, the mission is to get go into Frog Town to not only save the fertile virgins, but to impregnate the fertile virgins, and that's basically the whole premise of this movie. Because once they went into the refinery town of Frog Town, again, TW. I'm not a stickler because I'm nitpicking here because, again, it's 80s movies. I, I love the hokiness. I love the hoke. But even in the 80s, I forgot the dude's name that did all the horror mask and stuff like that. But you know where I'm going with this. Like Freddy Krueger. Oh, Tom, Tom Morello or not Tom Morello. That's, but Tom, Seg- Tom Segundo or something like that. Yeah, you, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. But he, Day of the he Dead. Does, Evil Dead. Yeah. But he had – he like you Savini, know, he, um, Tom Savini. Tom Savini. Okay, cool. But he honored his craft. He had passion for the craft right, right. of makeup and, and all that stuff. Frogtown Reflection Nights. It just looked like it was just a mask of frogs. And of course, you know, they, 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 they're they talking like this. <laughs> and all that stuff. But they're talking. It's just so... And for it's like a person gonna, with a frog face. And, and again, it, it's just... It, it's a person with a frog face. But again... Do you remember the 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 uh, the series V? Yeah, that was bad makeup too. But at least I could accept it for what they were trying to do. At least they had a human face, and then when they beat, when they blew in the buff, the face ex- exploded, and then you saw that dumb mask in beyond the it, face, the yeah. reptile mask behind it. This is just so hokey. Like and the shit. Terminator. I, now you saw the metal after he got beat up. But that was better makeup and all that stuff. Right. That was, but they, V is at least a TV show. This is a movie. It should have a better budget. I'm just saying. Yeah, but it's the budget. I Again, it's the 80s. I understand that. But at least, like you said, Tom Savini has a passion for the makeup and all that stuff. He has a passion for what he's doing. And, of course, V, they had a passion for at least with, with the makeup in itself. The human face explodes, and then you saw the reptile face. You says Terminator. Again, James Cameron had a passion for it to at least look good for the movie and the cinematography. Frogtown just looks like a bad porn that is just like so, you know, was so was like. Jar Jar Binks hometown? Nebula or some shit like that. They Naboo. look like they're from Naboo. They're all yeah. like they're from Naboo. <laughs> oh, God. That is so bad. But. TW, they, they go into this refinery town of Frogtown, but they also go into this factory, and of course, there has to be a stripper. And there's a frog stripper, TW, so you know what? And the frog stripper, again, it doesn't matter about the laws of nature, she's horny too! She's a horny and, toad. And she knew the history of Sam Hell, aka Roddy Roddy Piper, and she wanted to bang. And if this was a porno, if this was a porno, TW, 
he would have fucked her. That's all I'm just saying. Is what happened. So TW, what say you she about the put front? The mask on. She would have put the bag over her head for him too. Yes, she would. What I bet you there's about? a fucking porn a parody of this show. There has to be. There really has, has to be. There has, has to be. I, again, reflection nights. We're just trying to have some fun with this because I'm not going through the whole shit. Because again, that's the nuance. The mission was to invade Frogtown, get the information, and find out what the fertile virgins were. And get the TW. guns, because it was also black market guns. No, but we learned later, TW, so let's to be fair, the guy that accused P Piper of raping his daughter was also, we find I'm out in this movie, some shit. is a double agent because he wants the money. He Whatever money is in the new new world, TW, he's the go-between between, between the... He the is that? Count... Sodom. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was his name. That was his double agent name, Count Sodom. That Captain he was the Devlin, Count Sodom. He was the go-between between, between the, the women's government and the frog government, so he you know so he can make all the money for himself. No, but, he wanted to build the only nuclear weapon and he was gonna blow up all the women. He hated that women. He said I was gonna balance things back. He died in 2021, by the way. But uh, yeah. Again, the nuances of this movie is so bad. That's all it is. But they Maybe finally now we have to talk about the the protagonist, you could say, to, um, the antagonist, TW, and that is the leader of Frogtown. And they just call him one thing, Toady. His name is Toady TW. It was very simple, very direct. He was the big he was the big frog of the town, if you will. And Toad of course, Rocket. I don't know if about Toad the Red Red Sprocket, <laughs> but even Toady was horny too because when they captured uh, Roddy Piper's uh, underling, if you will, Reflectionites, she had to do the dance of the three snakes, and we find out T.W. that the three snakes was three loaded weapons himself. I don't know if he was fertile. I don't know if he was cap carrying weapons of mass seduction in the frog uh, world, but his snakes was going crazy when she was doing her gyrate and her dance actually sucked. I don't, even though she was, a, uh, let's say, uh, given encouragement by the festal virgins before she danced for the, she, before she did the dance of the three snakes. So let's say about all that shit. It's just really hard. Dude, I'm trying, I'm trying scenes, TW. One of the funniest scenes, she's like, let's just walk out that door right now. That guy ain't shit, whatever. And then they take him out. She does like all of a sudden she's karate. She's not the timid little blonde that she was. And then when she goes to leave, eight other guys come in and go, come on, bitch. And just take her out of there. And the girl's like, eh, maybe not. It was so stupid, dude. It was, it was, it's still not worth watching. Don't take this laughter. Like it means you should see it. It's that bad. And, and you know, what's the dude's name that just recommended it? Uh, Christopher Paul Bruce Wendland, the newest yeah, reflection. He either night. did not watch it. Oh, he did. Hear us talk about it. Or he watched it and was so angry he wanted us to suffer through it too. Very, nah, very he, he would never let us suffer. I think he he knew that we were gonna get give it some entertainment. He we were gonna give it some feedback. He he knew that we were gonna be passionate for our reflection nights. Again, Christopher, if this is a rib, Chris, you know, got you got it. <laughs> you win. You, 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 win. Win. you got us. That's all I'm supposed to say. But anyway, neither here nor there. But you know, there's really nothing left to talk about again because Roddy Piper. Oh, we have to talk about that scene where T Piper is actually tied up when they capture him, oh, and yeah. a, and of course, one of Toadie's like underlings has got a chainsaw, and and T W again. This is again bad '80s uh cinematography, but he is using a chainsaw to cut off the chastity belt, and you don't see him you know directly doing it, but you see the the fake sparks. The fakest, Sparks come up. TW, we're, I was laughing. I was laughing like this is ridiculous shit. I'm saying, what say you, TW, about that part? It's horrible. The, the whole time I'm watching, I'm like, is that fake or is there? Are they really firing sparks in front of both those guys? I think it ended up it's fake because it's too fluid. Like it's the same pattern for both of them, whichever camera's doing it. Um, mm -hmm. And Piper, first of all, why isn't he kicking this guy? Because he, he's, he's basically making it out like he's going to cut him in half to take the belt off of him. Uh, and then he just cuts through the belt. But the whole idea of cutting through the belt, he goes, this guy likes the technology. He wants to check it out. But then cuts the belt right where it ruins the belt. So how are you going to get the technology from it? And how did Piper not get cut? And then Style Lips, or whatever her name is, comes in to rescue him. 
And he uh-huh. goes, I owe you one. And she's like, oh. And then puts the, tries to put the, he goes, not now. And then she dies a fucking horrific death with a drill bit. It's just, yeah. it's so bad, man. It's so, so, so bad. Like Piper, I think what happened is, since this this was first, he probably filmed They Live first, because that's John Carpenter, probably took an extra time to produce it. And this mm-hmm. one got made to kind of jump on it before They Live came out and without production. Mm-hmm. And Piper probably saw and went, I'm, I'm, fuck this, I'm going back to wrestling. This is not for me. No, I mean, again, that that whole eight day, he was retired. He did two movies there, you could say, neither here nor there. But... With that being said, Reflection Nights, of course, Roddy Piper gets away. And, and, of course, you remember they lived the infamous line that's still remembered to this day. I've come here. Well, what's the whole line? I, I came remember? here to do two things. Chew yes. bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Well, in Hell Comes to Frog Town, he tries to do a line. He says, uh, it's time to kill the froggies. Oh, I thought you were going to say uh, a soldier's work is never done. <laughs> Well, pick your poison. He was trying to I don't do even remember the time to kill the froggies, but that would he, be more in line. He had the two shotguns. It was like, it's time to kill the froggies. And then he kills, you know, the underlings and all that stuff. And what's say ETW? Because, again, the, they live. The true bubblegum line is is remembered to this day. I it's, think we had it wrong. I think when we watched the movie, he actually doesn't say it like that. Mm-hmm. It's the Mandela effect. It's Yeah. Yeah, but he, that's the line. But either way, the They Live line still lives in infamy to this day as something yeah. celebrated. Yeah. You can tell that with this movie, you, you even said to yourself that Piper was being more Roddy Piper, mean, being more of a wrestler. He even did but, the eye gouge. Yes, he did. He did, Reflection Ice. He did an eye gouge. He did. I was waiting for a sleeper hole, but neither here nor there. But <laughs> in this movie, you can tell that he was trying to find these one-line zingers. Because like you said, TW, it was the script was bad. Even the, the 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 dialogue between him and the girl and him and the toad and all this stuff was so like it was written by a four year old. That's why it just it just it just really looked like the script was written by a four year old. Like the producer's four year old son or daughter just said, "Daddy, can you do my movie, please?" Right. <laughs> and he did it, and like fuck it, it cost me one point five million dollars, and probably it probably grossed like five million dollars worldwide. Tw, but that's There's a profit. No way. That's There's a profit. No way. That's a profit. That's all I'm just saying. But anyway, what's the ATW of him attempting to do these one-line zingers that is still not... Re- you you remembered something in this Frog Town movie that he was trying to do a zinger. Yeah, he was like just a, always trying to be Piper. He always, it's, all he had was one-liners. Like, he couldn't remember paragraphs or something. Like, I'm just going to hit one-liners. But, I, again, I'm going to say this. This is the best compliment I can give him. I didn't feel like he was acting. Right? Mm-hmm. So, watching Piper on screen... I didn't see bad acting. I just saw Piper. Whether that's bad acting or not, I just saw mm-hmm. Piper. The rest of them, especially, I can't believe we didn't talk about the fucking old man that he bumped into in the in the bar. Oh, Tooney. And so... Lo- Looney Tooney, or whatever his name the, was. Yeah, Looney. Lo- they call me Looney because I lost my Looney shit, whatever. Anyway, he, that, that whole scene, them even getting there, they had to go past the checkpoint where the guy who just got demoted, Count Sodom, Mm-hmm. It's already at his post working and running it. <laughs> They're not even gone yet. Like, how long do they keep him to test them? Fucking three days? It felt like a couple minutes and like, all right, you got to go find these bitches oh, right now. Oh, by, by the way, TW, isn't, isn't it apropos, even even for real life situations, reflectionized, you know, what, whatever side you're on with the, the border, the illegal immigration, all that stuff. Think about the post-apocalyptic world. The border is just that little tow booth. That's right. your wall. That's right. it. And they're the enemy, yet he walks into the bar white as fuck with a regular ass chick, and he mm-hmm. goes in there and everyone looks, and then someone says, When are we allowed to have humans in here or whatever? But the other guy's a regular just sitting there, loony, the whole time. Mm-hmm. I, I know he was dressed to make it look like he wasn't, and then when he revealed himself, that wasn't for their benefit, that was for our benefit that we didn't know he was a human. And he's like, yeah. Looney, you're alive. They told me blah blah blah. So it's just the whole premise of him being there goes against what they already said, like we're we're behind enemy lines, we're in enemy territory, like they're gonna kill him. Remember the black dude gets killed in the beginning? Dave mm-hmm. Chappelle the first, he gets <laughs> shot because he's like, You're not supposed to have a gun, you're a felon mm-hmm. or whatever, and they shot him in the head. Um I thought Piper was going to be the guy under that mask, but it was a frog guy. And right. that man, I didn't really think there was a real frog town. So when they saw frogs, I was like, what the fuck? 
this is Naboo above water. And it's yeah. just, it's bad. And his one liners did not save this garbage. No, it didn't. That's what I'm just saying. He was trying to like ca- have those zingers because again, for, for any purposes, Reflection Nights, Roddy Piper was trying to, I guess he was learning under the tree of Arnold Schwarzenegger because Schwarzenegger got the one line zingers. He found a way to get one line zingers in his movies, Terminator, Conan, Total Recall, all this stuff. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, TW, Schwarzenegger got a one line zinger that you could actually remember from that one movie or whatever. The Drago? Case, like, I must break. Hmm? I must well, break. Dra- Drago, too, but I'm just saying. But if you find a, if you find an actor that wants to do a one line zinger, that's what Piper was trying. That was his motivation, if you will. So, in all intents and purposes, Piper and his and his blonde haired chick, you know, the Conan chick, finally saved the Festival Virgins and they got to escape back into the town. So we could say the main it was actually a double main event because Piper had to overcome Count Sodom and Tody Re- uh, Reflection Night. So TW Tody Rhodes. To- to- the American Nightmare, Tody Rhodes. Okay, well we can go with that. Tony yeah, we, we can go with that. So let's say TW about you know, the, the funny thing about Roddy Piper's character, again, he's not Rambo. He's not Snake Plissken. He's not any he's, he's not any of these. He's Sam Howe. No, but he's not a guy. Technically, he's not a guy that that's a to me, he's he's not a guy that, that carries a gun. He he's had a, one, but he said he no. was a war hero. Remember? He was a war hero, Sam Hell, because he said my reputation precedes me. Yeah, I know, Sam Hell, war hero. She's like, no, this thing, and grabs his dick. Mm-hmm. And then says, I can't, where do I get it out? There's a flap. That was the other running joke. There's a flap. Yeah, that, that, it, it is a flap. So what say you about his double main events against Count Sai I don't, I don't and Tody Rhodes? How Toby, Toby Rhodes got dispersed because they just, he goes, I, she goes, I can lose them in the rocks. And then they just show him standing there. How did they end up getting killed? Uh, Tody Rhodes got killed because Sam Hill has, has a weapon. Oh, they were kid. chasing. No, what? No, they were chasing him. Yes, they were chasing Sam Hell and the Festal Virgins in the pink Cadillac, in the pink ladies Cadillac, no matter right. what. But then they right. lost him in the rocks, and that's where Count Sodom was, and mm-hmm. he threw the sword through him. That's where we learned that Roddy Piper's best weapon is not a gun, and is not the weapon of mass seduction, reflects nice. Sword. He, it's a sword. It's a katana sword where he uses it to kill Count like Sodom like a dart. And of course, he uses the katana sword reflection nights to chop off the hand of Tody Rhodes and That's he falls he yeah. off the cliff reflection yeah. nights. And of course, with all this being said, the re- I guess the reward for Roddy Piper is he goes back into the government to fuck Festal Virgins and then gets a two week vacation with the woman that, that actually he does like in, in the and she's OK the with it. It's basically the premise for The Bachelor. I got you, but you can fuck all these other girls, too. That's basically what happened. That's basically, that's not even post-apocalyptic. That's the nuclear family's logic. <laughs> fuck them all. Cook. She's a female yeah. cuck. Yes, she is. So what say you about this whole movie genre itself? I give it A for effort because it can, I, yes, I do. I give it A for effort because it has Roddy Piper. It has the chick from Conan the Barbarian. It, get, it has titties. I love titties. That's my favorite it, because that's TW's post. But that's an that's inside joke between me and him. But anyway, neither here nor there. It has titties. It has frogs. It has all this stuff. It could have been better. But it, the, again, it was written well, by Mad a four-year-old. Max, the movie I was thinking of. It was Mad Max meets Star Wars and Red Dawn. Yes. If if this was done in the in the spirit of Mad Max, in the spirit of Doom, then this movie would be an A. But again, this was written by the producer's four-year-old son or daughter and said, Daddy, could you just do this movie for me? So that's why I give it a great – I'll give it a triple F, TW. That's the grade I'm going to give it. I'll give them an, an A for effort, like you said, that they got this mm-hmm. shit made. <laughs> and another A that they got it distribu- distributed if it was mm-hmm. in a the theater or straight to VHS. New, New World Pictures. It was a big company it's, back then. It's stunning to me that this made it. In a day when we're hearing about they made a Wile E. Coyote movie that, that Warner Brothers was asking for too much money and nobody would pay it, so they just vaulted it and said, fuck it, we're not releasing it. Like, mm-hmm. are you kidding me? Put it on your stupid app. Like, don't just let it go nowhere. Put it there so people, now it's just sitting there and never to be made again. It's right. like, it's like, come on, man. What, what the hell? This movie got made somehow. And it got distributed. So for mm-hmm. that, 
so, somebody was working somebody. But as far as an actual movie, Triple F, is there a lower one? Can I go Triple G? Because Triple you, F, you triple whatever F you want. failure. I'll give it five. Five count Bundy style F. It's a five. Fail, 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 fail. It's absolute garbage. There's nothing redeeming about it at all. It is. It, it makes They Live look like Gone with the Wind. Because I remember when we did They Live. I didn't like that shit either. I'm like, why did I think mm-hmm. I liked this as a kid? It's not good. But it's god awful. And and They Live seems structured and well well made in comparison mm-hmm. to this Frogtown movie. And it's, I just, to go in thinking I was seeing Stallone and to see this, it's like, wow. The, the guy, Looney, has to be the producer. He has to be. He's either producer or the director. There's no way in hell. That guy gets casted in a movie unless they were straight up out of money and said, hey, man, you want to be in a movie? Sure. It it has to be. It just has to be. But again, you know, I think because Roddy Piper ventured into the world of Hollywood, maybe he did something with Harvey Weinstein. I don't know. That's just my, you know, conspiracy theory here. But again, that's the stories you hear about Hollywood reflection nights. Hollywood is evil. Hollywood does sacrifices. So if Roddy Piper had to sacrifice something for Harvey Weinstein, that's why he got into Hollywood, and that's how he got his role. Everybody has to get their role, that one role, TW. And sometimes you got to pay your dues in some kind of fucked up way. So Roddy Piper must have done something here. This was not gifted to him. He had to earn this one. But again, I gave it a triple F. You give it a triple what? Z? What? Triple F. No, five Fs. Oh, five Bundy, so Bundy give, 5F. You give it the B- Bundy 5F. So, again, A for effort, but, again, it's just an F all around. With that being said, we close on this special PWR at the movies that was requested by Christopher Paul Bruce Winland. I hope this wasn't a rib, but I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you was entertained by our looking at this because, again, this was the face. Well, if you see this on the video, Christopher Paul Bruce Winland, you'll see this face. on It's on the YouTubes. Huh? That's my face. Or Pluto. Or Pluto. But anyway, I just or had Tubi. A it was on Tubi and Pluto. It was on Tubi too. I didn't yeah. I did not know that. But I was watching it on the on the uh, YouTube stream. I was just happy that I just felt good that you that I gave you a link that you didn't have to pay for. That's all it was. It's funny because I went to watch a movie last night and I saw Santa's Helper. I saw Suburban Commando. <laughs> Look at those fucking movies I bought. Because of this damn podcast. But uh, this podcast costs us money. So if people want to, we should do a Patreon. You, we pick a Patreon and people pay us to fucking watch shit we don't want to watch. That's what it would be. You already got your OnlyFans, guys only. Um, actually, isn't it called Guys Only Fans? No, it's only it's, guy it's, fans. No, yeah. I have I have fan time for the ladies. But anyway, neither here nor there. But so we close on this Pedo Yard at the movies. Hell Comes to Frogtown 1988 movie edition. Starring Roddy, Roddy Piper. And we are going to be on a week hiatus because executive producer extraordinaire Big Ray Hernandez is on vacation with his lovely lovely wife. So they're going to have some downtime. So we know that he's going to do his Sam Hell with his weapon of mass seduction onto his wife. And while TW <laughs> is holding a AEW All Elite figure of CM Punk, give out those Honor. Ring of Honor edition. But give out those socials so we can get out of here and you're holding up a Carmelo Hayes WWE action figure. Already. Already. The Pro Wrestling Coalition Network can be found at PWC Network at Podbean.com. We can also find Hami Media Group at Podbean.com and also Hami Media Group at ChannelAttitude.com. Our show's on the X at PW Reflection. Uh, you can find Big Ray everywhere on social media at Big Ray Hernandez. And every Wednesday doing the next level podcast live uh and then also you can find me on instagram and x at tommy wonder 19 or also on x at the tommy wonder which is also my tiktok snapchat is number wonder facebook.com backslash tommy wonder and you can find big veto on the well at big veto brand on tiktok and then you can watch the early release of the reflection video at big ray hernandez on x and you can find me on the extra at PWSO PROF. That's PWSO Prof. And if this gets uploaded by 8 Track Brown, this will be on the PWSO YouTube network. There is a cash app on the PWSO YouTube network. So maybe I could get some of that money. So this way I could give you some of the money back of all the movies that you bought. <laughs> so, you know, 
But I have to talk this track around because he's holding my money too. So neither here nor there. So follow my brothers in arms, Billy Ray Valentine, the host of the Wednesday Locker Room at OB1 You Know Me. And of course, the king of the reactions, 8 Track Brown. That's the number 8, TRAC Brown. And we'll be back in two weeks. What are we going to do in two weeks? We might do a what if. We might do episodic. We might do a spotlight. We might do greatest laundry. I'll keep you on your toes, your friends. Nice. I'll keep you on your toes. With that being said, I'm the professor. That's Mr. Dum Dum Doe. It's on the Iron Stomach one. Woo! Probably one that's saying goodnight. And we'll see you next time here at the PWR Podcast at the Hami Media Group at Podbean.com. <laughs> time to kill the froggies. That was a bad line. That's all I can say. It's a horrible movie. It's garbage. Oh, yeah.